I guess without further ado, let's let, let's jump into our uh, how to make your home work for you in, in 2021. Uh, we find ourselves in the midst or hopefully at the tail end of a pandemic. And for many of us, the home is more than just a uh, familial domicile. It has now come to a permanent offsite, at least for me in my in my basement here, uh, now coming on to 11 months or 10 months or so of, uh, of, of, of working working remotely. Um, my name is Sam Castle. I'm the uh, the head of brokerage at Fly Homes. Um, for those of you who don't who, who are who are new to Fly Homes or you know or have never heard of us before, well, w welcome. Uh, secondly, you know Fly Homes has been around for about about five years. Our headquartered our headquarters are in um, are in Seattle. Over the past five years, we've helped over 2,500 um, home buyers find the, the 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 right the right home for them. Well, um, we've sold over $2 billion worth of worth of property and a billion of that actually happened in the past 12 months. So we're, we're going really, very rapidly. Um, we have locations uh, in Boston, Portland, SoCal, NorCal, and in, and in Seattle. Um, you know, the many, many, of, many, many people come to fly homes for our cash offer, which allows anyone who's, who's able to get underwritten to make a cash offer using our balance sheet and our credit, fly homes balance sheet and credit, to go ahead and purchase that home with cash. And then over the next three or four weeks, they'll, they'll refi with their preferred uh, mortgage lender and for par, we'll, we'll ship them over the home. But then that allows these, these buyers to be on the same, the same playing field as, you know, as, 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 as investors. Um, and really, really helps level the playing field. Uh, another really exciting product we have, and we actually have the, the owner of that, Sophia, on today, um, is our trade-up product. Our trade-up product uses the same, the same basic financial constructs as the, um, as the cash offer, but it allows current homeowners to tap into their equity that they have today, increase their buying power by as much as 40 or more percent, um, and move into their, their, um, their next home which out without the traditional inconvenience of having to move into an apartment first, then go ahead and shop for a home. So not only does it does it um, help you purchase a uh, does it increase the purchase power you have by tapping into your equity, it makes the whole purchase of of of, of moving much more humane. Um, let's 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 walk through uh, our esteemed panelists today, uh, starting with Elisa from Human Scale. Human Scale is a company that. Um, uh, that whose vision is to is to design products, office products um, that improve the human condition. Um, but I'll I'll let, I'll let uh, Elisa speak a little bit more on that. Thank you, Sam. Yes, uh, my name is Elisa Wasserberg. Um, my background, just so you know, I'm I'm a licensed chiropractor, but I'm also an ergonomist. And so, um, as Sam had said, Human Scale is a uh, manufactured company. So we manufacture ergonomic work tools for the office and for home spaces. But in addition to that, um, a lot of our clients early on in their over 30 years ago when we started, were really also interested in helping us uh, build and enhance their ergonomics programs. And so we started to hire consultants, ergonomists. And so we work with our product team and we help support our customers and provide ergonomic training, uh, software solutions, virtual assessments, all kinds of different ergonomic programs. So I look forward to answering any questions today. I'm sure there are many considering that we're all in these unusual circumstances and I'm happy to uh, be here. Thank you very much. Uh, thank, thanks, Elisa. Much appreciated. Um, next on our pan panel is Allison Rhodes Messner. She's the co-founder and CEO of YardZen, whose vision is to design beautiful, functional outdoor spaces for real people. That's right. So first off, Sam and Fly Homes, thank you so much for having me. I am co-founder and CEO of YardZen. We are a two-year-old venture capital-backed landscape design and build company, very passionate about all of your outdoor spaces and excited to help people get more out of their outdoor spaces. This is obviously a very unique time where we're spending a lot of time at home and looking for our outdoor spaces to do double, triple, quadruple duty as not just our yard, but our kids' uh, playground during Zoom school recess as an outdoor you know, living room, um, outdoor dining room, a place to take Zoom calls, so, um, so yeah, we, we are very excited to be here and very grateful for the opportunity. 
Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for being here, Allison. Um, last but not least, my colleague, so uh, Sophia Liu, who's the director of, of Trade Up, the uh, the the, pro, the the service I I, I mentioned I mentioned earlier. <clears throat> Sophia, you want to let the people know how we are. Yeah, thank you, Sam. Yeah, sorry. How we're crafting a home buying experience that people will love. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So my name is Sophia, and I am the director of Trade Up, um, and also have been the market manager for our Seattle, Portland, and Boston operations. I am a licensed real estate agent in uh, Oregon and Washington State. Have been with the Five Homes for uh, about three years, and as Sam mentioned, that uh, Five Homes does have very differentiated products that really help our clients, uh, home buyers, to become competitive in some of the hottest markets in the in the country, um, and we do. Have have a vertically integrated um, service stack as well with uh, Fahams Brokerage, which is where Sam and I are from, um, as well as mortgage service um, and title as well closings as well. So. Brilliant. Thanks for your time, Sophia. Hey, so let's let's dive in. Without without further ado, let's get the uh, to the juicy part of, of today. For the panel, um, what changes have you seen in your clients uh, that have come looking to, to you since the pandemic has, has started? Maybe we start with... Uh, you know, with, with Elisa, our resident ergonomist. Did I get that right? <laughs> you did, yes. Um, so I would say a lot of people, I mean, certainly when things started, everyone was sort of on this delay button, thinking that, you know, this will only last, you know, 30 days or so. But now, like you said, we're, you know, almost a year in. And I would say the first thing that people usually ask us is, how can I be more comfortable at home? What can I do with things that I already have without having to go invest in a lot of money? Um, how can I make myself more comfortable? And then some of the other things is, um, and I know Allison will have a great answer to this, but how do I work with my kids and work in the same space, right? So that is always a challenge. Um, we actually get that question quite a bit. And then the third thing is, how do I make, if I live in a small apartment or I live in a small space and there's really only one main table, how do I divide it up and how do I uh, make it so that everybody has uh, the opportunity to work at the same location? Um, that's another question we often get as well. So um, I would say those are probably the, 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 I would say the most popular things and I have more to say about each of those as the questions continue um, in terms of providing those solutions as well. Right on, right on. So, you know, over to Allison, uh, same questions. What, what kind of um, you know, consumer behavior or uh, changes in consumer behavior have you seen with the pandemic? Yeah, definitely. I mean, first and foremost, just greater demand to, to get more out of their home, right? We, we as Americans have a new relationship with our homes. And so we see that reflected in the reasons people are coming to Yards End. We're very focused on the outdoor space. And so, um, you know, to, to your point, Elisa, about looking for space that's going to sort of provide utility to everybody that lives in the household, we have clients coming to us asking for ways to, to take their yard, their small yard in a lot of cases, and make it work for everybody, make it work for their kids, make it work for their partner, make it work for their pets, make it work for the occasional um, very small social distanced gathering that they want to host in their backyard um, or their front yard. We've seen um, we've seen a new trend emerge. We call it the social front yard. We've never seen people wanting to create patios and and sort of social spaces in their front yard before the past 12 months. And now we see that people want to gather and wave, you know, wave to their neighbors as their neighbors pass. Um, but yeah, I mean, just generally greater demand and and help kind of making making sense of how they can get more utility out of their homes. Right on. Right on. And Sophia, we've seen some very interesting demand uh, from the demand side on the uh, on the buyers. What, yeah. what, what's been going on in the real estate industry this past year? Yeah, I would say it's a pretty uh, drastic change to how people have been uh, doing real estate transactions and also, you know, where they're looking to move to, what are they buying and how they're buying uh, in general. Um, so we have seen a pretty strong trend of, I would say, from urban um, house searching to suburb move. Um, that trend has been pretty clear with people really looking for uh, bigger homes and now commute may not 
may be a, I would say, less concern for a lot of people uh, needing to commute to their offices. A lot of people are open to the suburb areas that they were, um, I would say, not considering in the past. Um, so that is one uh, definitely trend. Um, and also, we even see cross-state moves as well. Um, so because, you know, Flat Homes has cross-state presence and we connect the, the entire West Coast, we have seen more and more people looking to either get out of uh, certain geographic regions and looking to uh, potentially move into lower cost state or uh, cities, and those have been uh, a trend that's pretty, um, I would say, uh, obvious as well. In terms of what clients are buying, um, certainly uh, a lot of people are looking for bigger space. Um, they are looking for more bedrooms and more yard and lot space as well for their family um, because everyone's staying at home these days. Um, but also we're seeing, uh, you know, with the condo market is softening a little bit uh, due to pandemic because people are looking for uh, single family homes and they're looking for that uh, really transitioning into uh, individual and um, detached home. That type of style has becoming more and more popular as well. Um, from a, I, I would say from a how people have been shopping for homes, uh, it was a more drastic change because with pandemic uh, early on, uh, open house was no longer a thing that we can do uh, for a lot of clients. So we do see a lot of people relying on virtual showings. Uh, they're looking at 3D tours um, as well as, um, you know, more guided tours from uh uh, our field agents as well. Like if you're looking to schedule uh, a home showing uh, because open house, you cannot do that independently anymore. Um, in some of the states that we operate in, uh, we see more people that's scheduling for tours uh, or uh, they're just looking at video tours as well. Right on, right on. Uh, insightful. Allison, let, let, let's go back to you with this next one. I mean, uh, you know, this pandemic is very, is very personal to all of us. How, um, how have you modified your, your own environment dur during this time? Yeah, it's a great question. So I have a second grader and a fourth grader, Coco and Max are my kids, and we're spending a lot of time together as a family. So we planted a vegetable garden. We're big Italian food fans. And so um, we, we've never had a vegetable garden before. It was a great use of outdoor space. So we did that. It's been a hobby for, for the whole family to enjoy. And we've made some amazing pasta sauces. In addition to that, it's been really, really critical for everybody in the family to have their own designated space. Mm. Um, even my, you know, my kids have designated outdoor spaces. They have indoor spaces where they can do Zoom school. My husband and I each have our own designated space and that's been a complete game changer. I think if I was kind of floating around home with a laptop, it would not only be very uncomfortable and I, at least I'd probably have some serious back problems by now, um, but, but also just, you know, for the, the routine that needs to be introduced into our daily lives, having our own designated spaces has been really important. Yeah, no, it's, it's like now more than ever, personal boundaries takes on a, a, a whole 100%. new definition when we're living on top of each other. I, yeah. I, I think that's, that, that's really insightful. Uh, Elisa, Elisa, um, looking at you, what, what, what have you changed? What have you modified? Well, right now, I, I I would say it was very gradual for me, um, obviously, as an ergonomist, and you probably know this from like doctors that you see, they often are the worst patients. <laughs> so that was kind of my case. Um, I have to say, like, the very early on, I wasn't sure what how things would turn out. And so I was working by sitting on my couch. And that was the most the worst thing I could have done. And so then eventually I used very low budget items, even though I work for human scale, I didn't want to invest in it yet, but I, um, I used pillows to raise my chair. I used towels against the curve of my back. Mm -hmm. I sat in the kitchen chair for a little bit. And then um, I used books to raise my monitor. Um, so it was at the right height. One of the things that is very important, I know this is a question maybe later, but um, ideally having a detachable keyboard and mouse is primary. If you don't have those items, and let's say you're using a laptop, you're never gonna have good ergonomics. You're always gonna be slouched looking at the monitor. So certainly I would say those things I did purchase right away. And then over time I realized, okay, I could probably, instead of using books, I'll purchase a laptop riser. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then I purchased a footrest. Um, because I raised, I am working on my kitchen table. So of course, having to raise my chair to its highest height, I needed something for my feet. 
And then um, just recently I purchased a monitor. So now I'm not using my laptop and now I have pretty much a home ergonomic setup. I've got a task chair, keyboard and mouse, a laptop, a monitor, footrest, uh, palm support to, for my uh, wrists to uh, not anchor. And, um, and then of course set it up just uh, for, to uh, adhere to neutral postures. So I would say it was more gradual for me, but I think to see everyone have that ability to at least, um, at least have the knowledge to know what to do. Maybe you, it might take a couple, a couple weeks to get the things you need, but at least have that knowledge. And certainly, you know, um, we offer that knowledge a lot to our- This is great. It's, it really feels like we're getting some first principles here and uh, on the essential toolkit for how to survive working at home through the pandemic, which is number one, very clearly, as Allison pointed out, create, the, create those boundaries. Once you have those boundaries set up, make sure you have the right posture. Correct. As I lean back and rub my lower back. <laughs> uh, Sophia, Sophia, same question to you. Yeah. Right? What, what have you adjusted over the past year? Yeah, so I am one of those who actually upgraded from a condo to a single family during the pandemic. So um, yeah, I, I had a condo in Seattle uh, in the Ballard area and um, it was becoming, once you know I was starting working from home, it was becoming a little bit too constrained, a little too small. I had a roommate um, and the two of us are working together uh, on the, in the same living room. It just wasn't sustainable anymore. So, um, you know, leveraging the, cool employee program that we have at Fly Homes. Uh, we actually, you know, found a, a good home uh, in a very nearby neighborhood. I loved the home at first sight and I uh, was really fortunate to be able to get it, um, you know, during the, in the beginning of pandemic. So now I have a single family home. I designated one of the room to be my office. And now I set it up as, um, has a raising um, standing desk with a monitor in front, ergonomic keyboard and mouse. Um, and have an office chair with me as well. So, so far it's been working pretty well. That's awesome. Boundaries, posture, then freedom, then explore the great beyond, taking it to the next level, moving out of that, that, that 900 square foot apartment into your 1400 square foot. I don't know, uh, sing, single. Pretty close. All right, that, that was all, all great advice, all, all great perspective. Now, if you could have, if you could provide one gem, one easy lifting gem, that would be the most impactful thing uh, that, 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 that any of our listeners uh, could do. What, you know, what, what would that be? Let's, let's start with, let's start with Sophia. Yeah, Sophia. Um, I was, yeah, <laughs> the most impactful, the most impactful thing for me has been, actually setting up my office or my workspace in a way that I am facing um, outside. So I have a view, I have sunlight coming to me. Um, it's, you know, working from home, it's very easy just to sit on your chair for the entire day. Um, but when you're raising up your head and being able to see something really uh, natural outside, um, it creates a whole different vibe for, uh, you know, carry on the day from, from the beginning. So that's what I did that was super impactful. And I know some of my friends also did so as well. Right on. Maybe, maybe back to you, Allison. What, what, what are your thoughts here on the one takeaway gem? I, Sophia's is excellent. I wish I, could, I wish I could steal hers. I agree with you wholeheartedly. I'm looking out the window at green space and the natural light really does change the game for somebody who works on a laptop all day long. Um, I've got to say for my family, it was buying new furniture to create a beautiful outdoor dining space so that we could be outside, eat, eat with fresh air, dine al fresco, the whole family looks forward to it. And I would encourage everybody, even if you just have a small patio to create space to, to enjoy a meal outside. Brilliant. Weather permitting. <laughs> of course. Yeah, that's I'm, 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 I have a very West Coast um, mindset. So apologies to everybody out there who's got snow on the ground. And, and, and if you aren't living on the West Coast right now, but maybe would like to, I might know a realtor who can help you out. <laughs> uh, Alisa, uh, Alisa what's, what, 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 what's your number one? Well, as it relates to ergonomics, um, I would definitely say a keyboard and mouse. Mm -hmm. um, certainly it gives you, um, it's going to promote a better posture. But one of the things, um, I do like the idea of the stretching and moving. Um, because it is really, really important for all of us to get up 
and move our body. So technically we shouldn't be sitting more than an hour that whether it's getting a glass of water, whether it's, you know, doing a couple squats, maybe it's, you know, stretching your wrists, but stretching is going to be very, very important. Um, I also think a comfortable chair is also a very important feature because if you're sitting the majority of your day, you want to make sure that it's a, that it's comfortable for you and supportive as well. What, what would be the warning signs, um, right? Because there's those wonderful chairs that you jump right into and they, you know, they, they feel very cushy. How, how, how do I know? How do I know if I'm in a supportive chair? Well, the way that I would explain it is that most people have okay chairs, unless it's, you know, if it's a wood chair and there's no cushion, probably not the best idea. But if you have some cushion on it and even adding a pillow to it can help, um, that would be you know, that would be obviously ideal. Um, but what I do notice is a lot of people do have these adjustable chairs and yet they don't make the adjustments on the chair. So the idea is knowing what height you should be, what seat. So if you look at a chair, knowing, you know, the seat depth, how, how deep that should be, knowing that there's a curve in there supporting your natural posture. Um, and then, of course, your armrest, you don't want your armrest to get in the way um, from you getting close to your keyboard, right? That's a big, big piece of these ergonomic task chairs as well. Right on, right on. Uh, so we started with Sophia. So let's, let's go to Allison here. Um, and this, this, I think this really you know, hits the spot with Yard Zen. Uh, I, I know that you're mainly focused on, uh, on the outdoor spaces, but do you have any ideas for how to bring the out, outdoors in, inside? Absolutely. Absolutely. So one of our favorite um, tips that we offer to our clients is to bring greenery inside. It is way easier than you think to uh, take a, pick, a pair of kitchen scissors or better, you know, better yet, if you have garden shears on hand and, and do some pruning in your yard and bring in some greenery, put it in a, a nice vessel, anything will do, put it on a table, on a countertop. It really changes the feel of your home. Potted plants are great. You know, they're, I, I encourage everybody, give them a try. A lot of people are, are fearful about keeping plants alive, but by all means, try. And then one of our design, design tricks um, or factors that our designers always use is seeking to understand what's happening on the inside of the home so that we can better design the outside of the home. And what I mean by that is we wanna know what's, what's on the other side of the window that we can see from the exterior so that we can put ourselves in your position as the homeowner and imagine looking out the window, what are we looking at? Um, as Sophia said, you know, she's creating her workspace with, with the outdoors in mind and wanting to make sure that there's natural light and green space that's um, pouring in and viewable. And really the same should be true of all of the windows in your home. Whatever you can do to, you know, to create more, more beauty and create that connectivity between outdoors and indoors is fantastic. Right on. Right on. Um, that's interesting, uh, light. I, I wonder, um, Alisa, do you have any thoughts about, about proper lighting? And yes. Yeah, for, um, you, you don't want, the light directly behind you, putting a glare on your screen. Ideally, um, having it perpendicular to your screen would be ideal. Hmm. Um, if, for instance, in my case, you can see I do have a window behind me. Um, I really don't have a choice here. So I, it actually doesn't create, I don't have direct sunlight coming through that window and I don't have a, a whole lot of glare. But ideally, if um, I do have blinds, and so certainly the blinds, I have a couple of my um, ergonomists that I work with that, you know, their office, they don't have a choice in their space. So they just put the blinds down to, to minimize the glare. Um, but that is an important feature and certainly can make your eyes very tired looking at a screen. Right on. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, to you, Sophia, you know, and I think this is similar to, to the situation that maybe you just corrected, which is, you know, some people find that their current footprint, uh, you know, of their home or apartment isn't really working for them. Um, I mean, you just moved. What were, before mm -hmm. moving potentially, what were, what were some of the um, strategies that you used to maximize the, the space? 
Um, I personally, I probably just work in different parts of the home uh, as much as I can so that, you know, there's change of scenery, there is a change of my posture position as well. Um, you know, I, before then, um, I didn't have a uh, designated office space. So it was a lot of working on the dining, in the dining room, um, but also on the sofa a little bit as well. Um, but really exploring different parts of your ho existing home, uh, even though it could be a small space, um, just trying to see if there's uh, any other good spots uh, to make it as your own to, to be comfortable working. Yeah. Right on, right on. Um, let's stick with the, uh, the small, small movements for huge improvements. Um, and let's go, let's go back to Allison here. Allison, what are some, um, maybe even lower cost, do it yourself, not trying to drive business away from yards then, but some, a lower cost approach to, um, to beaut beautifying your, your lawn. We, we have plenty of, of clients that come to us with, um, you know, with, with budgets that require some creativity. So we are no stranger to this question. So we always say, first off, do an inventory of what you have. If you have a patio that is a little bit worn and dated, maybe you can breathe new life into it by, um, by resealing it or painting it. There are some great products on the market. You can paint concrete and brick. Um, you can paint fences. We're seeing a lot of, a lot of black fences this season, which are, um, you know, a very, very stylish thing that you can do to your, your yard. So yeah, so re repurpose what you already have. New furniture can be expensive, but there are lots of great options. So you can style your space with a nod toward the utility that you're seeking to get out of, out of it. So if you're looking for you know a new dining area, restaurants are closed in your area, and you want to be able to eat outside, you know by all means invest in a dining table. Or if you like to enjoy a glass of wine at the end of the day, buy those you know couple hundred dollar Adirondack chairs and stick them on your front porch so you can enjoy a beautiful a beautiful cab in the evening, um, you know, or or whatever it might be. It doesn't have to be expensive. Outdoor renovation can get very costly, as I'm sure everybody knows. Um, can also add thirty percent to the value of your home, as I'm sure the the Fly Homes team knows quite well. But, um, but yeah, we say, you know, start small with a nod toward the functionality that you're going to get out of it. Brilliant. Brilliant. Um, you know, I, I guess a similar question back to, um, back to Elisa, um, you know, what are the kind of, you know, maybe DIY kind of, uh, you know, lo lower budget things I can do to, to get, to get my back to stop aching? Yeah. So. <laughs> Um, I mentioned a few earlier, certainly the way that you sit in your chair is going to have a big impact on how you feel. Um, using a pillow, um, to be honest, I, because my work surface is not, is a little high and my chair is all at its highest, I actually have a pillow on my chair. So knowing that I'm sitting all day and I even have a, you know, a good task chair with me, but the pillow actually helps a little bit. Um, and then, you know, do it yourself, like I said, books or boxes. So instead of having a footrest, I used a yoga block as my footrest for the, the longest time. Um, you can also just, I mean, how many of you have ordered from Amazon? You know, we get boxes all the time. <laughs> so certainly um, there's plenty of boxes out there that you can use as a footrest. And then books, um, using a book or a, a box also on the table to raise your monitor. So the idea is that the monitor, if I were to draw a line from the level of my eye, when I, that line, it should hit the top of the screen. Wow. And so that's about the height of the monitor. So make sure that that monitor is at the right height, because if it's not, you're going to be doing this or you're going to be doing this, and that will add up to some discomfort. I'm a good 12 inches from ideal at the moment. Uh, there's a there's a solid downward trajectory to my to to, uh, to to my gaze. Have you seen a shift in the product mix that that um, uh, th that you're selling that that customers are are coming for during the pandemic? Has there been any any market difference? Um, well, it's hard for me because I'm not really selling product. I sell more of the ergonomic services. Okay. But, um, I would say I think in this environment, when companies are giving out stipends. People are buying things that really fit what they can afford. And so I would say, you know, probably things like laptop holders are probably very popular. Um, Footrests are probably very popular as well. Um, I would think, you know, chairs that 
probably not is not as popular only because people don't unless they want to spend the money. Um, I know that there's a lot of deals out there that you can get that are you know specific for that work from home. So I know a lot of companies are offering discounted items. Um, but yeah, I would say more of the lower budget items is what people are tending to invest in. Right on. You know, what, one thing that surprised me uh, was when most of our markets moved into a shelter in place situation in uh, end of uh, March last year, uh, you know, the, all the analysts, internal analysts, external analysts were trying to figure out what is this going to do to the, to the housing industry? Uh, can you talk through a little bit about the surprise that we've experienced over the past 10 months, Sophia, and kind of the, yeah. cur the current state of the pandemic uh, real estate market? Yeah, it was a truly a roller coaster. I'll call the the housing market in the last twelve months uh, for sure. We actually entered into twenty twenty with a historic high uh, in all the markets that we we operate in. Um, you know, Seattle, Bay Area, San Francisco, um, and just seeing that you know there is constantly a short of supply of housing, um, but still very strong demand from the buyers. So that lasted through a good portion of January and February. Um, and then when March hit, when shelter place uh, took into effect, it not only impacted the housing market because you know people do need to go into houses, they need to uh, go with their agent, seeing the house, make a purchase. Uh, it also impacted the mortgage market quite a bit as well. So people's ability to borrow money, um, borrow to the amount that they want to uh, purchase, um, and also just people's um, uh, I would say openness to spend that much money in a unstable or unknown marketplace uh, at that time. So we definitely saw some shifts uh, when it comes to people's mindset of how much they're willing to spend or if that's the right time for them to purchase right when pandemic hit. Um, and most recently it has been, you know, taking a really, uh, I would say upbeat turn for, for anyone in the real estate industry and also for sellers in, in the market as well. Um, just because inventory has been a historic low in the last um, six months or so with everyone staying in home. Um, not all of the sellers are actually looking to list their home, but buyers are there out there in the market. They're looking to upsize, getting to a bigger home or move out of the urban area. Um, so the demand continue to increase but supply is still very short. So we're in, I would say, one of the most um, competitive situation that we've seen uh, in, in the history um, when it comes to how hot the housing market has been. Constantly, these days, we're seeing houses getting outbid, um, you know, 15, 20 offers is pretty regular in like Seattle and Bay Area that we're seeing. Um, so it's extremely to uh, extremely important to uh, prepare yourself if you are looking to purchase a home to have the best product, best um, offer in place so that you can win your home, hopefully in the least number of tries. <laughs> any, any thought for uh, those current homeowners who might be looking to sell, any con special considerations uh, given the pandemic? Yeah, I think if you're a seller right now, it's actually a perfect time to sell. Uh, you'll probably get a lot of buyers through your door and sell your home in within a week or so. Um, but still, it's important, I'll say, to present the best first impression for the buyers. Make sure that you invest in um, you know, staging, professional photography, get the backyard uh, sorted out as well, uh, making sure that there's a good first appeal for those buyers coming through. Um, but also these days, I think uh, sellers, uh, if you have enough bedrooms in your home, may be worthwhile to consider stage one of them as a office as well, because um, people are looking for extra space uh, to hang out with the family, but also have separate space for their um, home office as well. Um, so we have seen more success with, if you have three plus bedrooms, I would say it's good to uh, stage one of them as an office. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. And, you know, Allison, um, when you think about a seller, um, uh, you know, prep, prepping, prepping to sell, what, you know, what, what, what kind of advice or services, uh, you know, could you offer? It's all about curb appeal, as Sophia said. Um, the, the majority of our clients are coming to us with the expectation that they're going to live in their home. And so they're really looking to create a yard that's that's sort of custom built for them and their family. Uh, we have plenty of clients who, who flip houses, who are coming to us wanting a professional design because they want to sell their house. Um, so yeah, the, those clients are more, more interested in just making it look very nice, similar to how you'd stage the interior of a home. So, you know, plants, mature plants are better. They're gonna look more full. They're gonna be more appealing to the eye. 
If you have decomposed granite in your yard, which is a very common, very sustainable material from coast to coast, touching that up, a fresh coat of paint, if you have a painted fence or anything painted in the backyard, um, pretty straightforward. Right on, right on. You know, one, one, one topic around ergonomics that, that we haven't covered is the standing desk. Is there any, um, I, I'm at one right now, as a matter of fact. Uh, Alisa, do you have any uh, a, a tips or, or, or insights around using standing desks? Yeah, I mean, I think what happens is a lot of people, um, when they purchase a standing workstation, obviously, hopefully it's a stand and sit, they tend to stand too long. Mm. So the idea is um, I've seen people buy mats, you know, a standing mat to, to step on. And the key is, is if your legs get tired and you feel like you need a standing mat, that just means it's time to sit down. So, um, yeah. <laughs> um, but realistically, if I were to take an hour's worth of time, about 45 minutes of it should be seated and about 15 minutes standing. So that's really the, the um, percentage time um, in terms of a sit to stand workstation. Um, I do think that, um, again, people that purchase only standing workstations, not a great idea because you need to sit and you need to sit comfortably as well. So. Maybe just a little bit more, more about this and maybe this is just a very selfish topic at the moment. Hopefully some other people are gaining value from it. Is that, it's interesting. It says 75% sitting, about 25% of the time you're, you're, um, you're gonna be standing. What, what's the benefit of, of standing? What, what, what's, what's the body doing in that 25% of time? Well, certainly it's, um, it's really more about blood flow. So mm. in any static position, your blood is going to not, obviously not flow as well. So it's really more about the movement. And so when you go from a seated to a standing, there's movement in going from each of those positions. And so with that movement, you're actually getting more blood flow. And if you think what blood does, blood carries oxygen. And mm. If, you, if you're working, 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 it's almost like your hands are running little marathons all day, but do they get enough stretching? Do they get enough blood supply? Do they get enough oxygen, right? You need more oxygen when you're running a marathon. So a lot of it is about moving and that's really the sit to stand environment. Now, the other thing to think about if you stand too long, one of the challenges is that it can wear your joints down, right? Mm -hmm. I can see you already leaning a little bit. You're kind of shifting your weight. And part of that is because your, your back is getting uncomfortable. Those muscles in your spine are really honing in and, 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 and are very tight or very flexed right now. And so they take a little break every now and then. And um, certainly your feet, the bottom of your feet, to stand all day on your feet is not comfortable. So... <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> but yeah, so there, there's, there's positives and negatives in both the standing and the seated. Um, and I would say, again, that, that percentage 75 to 25 is about right. Well, my body thanks you. I, I, I think this, this, that was absolutely wonderful. <laughs> the, the, uh, moving, moving my desk from, from, from standing to seated has, has, uh, has done wonders for my lower back instantaneously. So I appreciate that. You know, well, now you got to roll a towel and stick it right in the curve of your back. I'll be right back. No, but um, <laughs> you know, af, af, after, after you've purchased your brand new home with a beautiful backyard, uh, you know, from Fly Homes, Yard Zen has come in and made it into your dream oasis in your backyard. How much time should we spend? I'm going to stick with Alyssa right here. How much time should we spend moving around in that in, in, in that oasis, right? During during our workday, right? We have we're 25, 75% sitting, 25% standing. Motion to get your blood moving is great. How often should I be forcing myself to go to go take that walk, to go take the uh, take that stroll? Well, I mean, that's a very subjective question in a way because everybody has different work schedules and everybody has different deadlines. Um, but ideally, what I usually tell people, I mean, the reason we have a lunch break is because we need to get out of our seat and move, right? We need to actually move and we need more than just a sit to stand. We actually, our body needs that that oxygen mm -hmm. and blood flow. So, 
um, you know, if I had a yard like like Allison probably does, I would probably be getting up more and maybe even just doing a lap around the yard. You know, when I take that break and maybe it's once an hour, maybe it's once every two hours, I'm probably going to do a little walk around the yard. I will tell you what I've done recently is I have a, a kettle butt bell. Do you know, guys know what a kettle bell is? It's um, a big round thing with a handle on top. I get out of my chair and I do 20 reps of that because what it does is one, it gets my blood flow really quickly raised, gets my adrenaline going and it, it makes my belly a little smaller, hopefully. <laughs> but um, yeah, you can make it creative, but um, I unfortunately don't have a yard. I am in an apartment, but um, certainly if I had that, I would definitely be walking around um, frequently. Virtual yards. I think I think there's something there, uh, uh, Allison. I, th I think that's some of the, a direction maybe. Uh, that's that's just free. That's a freebie right there. Virtual yards. Okay. Listen, you know, so um, not not all, all locales have the same seasonality of of, of Southern California. When you, when you find yourself right now in a, in a cold environment in the middle of January, uh, and you start thinking about this, you know, your your some your summer months strolling around your your personal oasis. Um, When's the right time to get started? How would I even, uh, you know, what, you know what, what do I do in the off season while it's snowing? Yeah, so uh, a lot of our clients in cold climates really gravitate toward fire, fire, fire pits or heat sources. Oh, brilliant. And so, yes, and so, you know, even when it's technically snowing outside, you can fire up that fire pit and be outside. We, we have clients lean on furniture that doesn't have cushions that is durable, that will withstand the elements. Um, we encourage people to just bundle up, put on warm clothes, drag a blanket outside, nothing too sophisticated, but just find a way to get outside because it really is a wonderful thing. Being in green space leads to wellness. This is very commonly known. And so the more that you can, you can just get outside, take a deep breath, put your phone down, connect with yourself, connect with your loved ones, the better off you are. Um, yes, of course, in California and warmer climates, we get more of the, the kind of use out of our outdoor spaces that you envision when you look at a virtual, this is a yard zone design here, this is not my actual yard, but um, when you envision a space like this, um, and not everybody has that, you know, th that consistent 70 degree weather year round, of course. So, um, so yeah, I mean, the, I think embrace the embrace the seasons, embrace the weather. Get outside, go for a walk in the rain, you know, enjoy the snow. Yeah, I can I can smell the s'mores. Uh, you know, I'm, I, I want to cuddle up underneath the blanket. I, I love that vision. Uh, and and uh, I've been a little absent-minded about fire pits, but uh, yeah, not, uh, not, nothing uh, not, nothing better than that. Um, there's a there's a question to Sophia it, um, around accessory dwelling units. Do you want to explain what that is, and and then kind of talk talk through how how, how they're used. Yeah, yeah. So accessory dwelling unit, ADU, it's commonly known. Um, it's actually it has been pretty popular in the last, I'll say, five years or so in a lot of our different markets. Um, it is certainly a way for you to add on more space onto the lot uh, of the home that you have. It could be a completely separate detached uh, unit outside of your main home, or it could also be considered as, you know, you know, finishing your basement, but making it legally a ADU with uh, a stove, a separate entrance, um, somewhere that, you know, your guest or, um, you know, Airbnb is actually commonly used uh, for, for uh, ADU. Uh, you could define it that way as well. Um, so if you're thinking about adding ADU to your existing home, uh, just make sure that you, you check with the local uh, county and city regulation when it comes to adding additional buildings onto your lot. Uh, sometimes there are different zoning laws with how many structures can be allowed per square footage of green space. Um, and, you know, in order for it to really qualify as ADU, you may have to have very specific elements in the uh, building as well, um, just so that if you do decide to use it for for example, Airbnb as a separate income source, um, you know, it has to be uh, registered with the local uh, county and city as well um, before you can actually use it for income generating purpose. Interesting. I, I, uh, all new information to me. Thanks, Sophia. Um, 
Yeah, um, I mean, I, 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 you know, I'd certainly ask for some questions from um, uh, fr fr from the audience. If there's if there's anything we want to dive into a little bit deeper, this is a, per a perfect time to, to to throw some questions up for our, our panelists. Um, in the interim, um, let's find a juicy one. That was over promising. Now let's see if I can deliver. Uh, yeah, we, we, we've, we've hit on, we've hit, actually hit on quite a bit uh, this evening. Let me, um, let, let me go down to the Q&A, see if we have anything uh, open as far as questions going. I do want to plug the fact that those of you marathoners who, who, who have stayed with us through the panel, um, if you take the post-event survey, uh, you'll get, uh, you'll be entered into uh, a raffle to win $150 Amazon gift card. It is only for the uh, respondents to the survey. So uh, yeah, chances are actually fa fairly good, at least better than the billion dollar Powerball we had uh, last week. Um, really, I don't know, are there, are there any are there any topics you feel uh, you feel we've glossed over or, or really should, should dive into? Um, this is to the panelists. Um, I see a couple questions there. Oh, look at that, it is populating, thank you. Oh, love the question. This is great. Favorite under fifty dollar purchase. Let's uh, let, let, let's start with Sophia. The first one. What's the most creative your favorite, your, your, your favorite fifty dollar purchase to improve uh, to improve your, your your workplace at home? Hmm. I would say probably some indoor plants that I purchased. I've become a more of a plant person ever since the pandemic hit. Um, and they are great if you know how to propagate them. So they will turn from one plant to 10 plants, just a matter of time. <laughs> a, little, a little care, just the right amount of water. Uh, speaking of care and watering plants, Allison, what, what, what are your thoughts here? On care and watering plants or my favorite? Oh, on, your, on, your best, on your best single uh, <laughs> under $50 purchase. Oh, that's a tough one. Um, I, I wish I could show you guys my workspace. It's very minimal. I have a desk and a chair and a laptop. Um, I'm going to say, I, so my chair was around $75. I'm going to say my chair. I'm going to cheat a little bit on this one, but my chair really did change the game. I love Elisa's suggestion about using a pillow that hadn't really crossed my mind. Um, but yeah, I mean, having, having a chair has been a nice chair, comfortable chair has been hugely helpful for me. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to check out uh, uh, a human scale after this. I think uh, I'm, I'm sitting on a wooden chair with no cushion. And Ooh. yeah, I know I'm breaking all your rules, but I'm <laughs> I'm, I'm trying. Uh, Alisa, at least what do you think? F Fifty bucks. That's a tough for one for me. A um, couple things came to mind. Um, I'm gonna say a few things. I think a palm support. So you guys might know it as a wrist rest. We call it palm supports because you're supposed to rest your wrist because that cuts off the circulation. You can rest your palm right here. That's really where it should be resting. So a palm support, those are like $12. You can get a really, you know, very inexpensive one. So that would be one. I think the second thing to invest in that probably is um, less than $50 I have a keyboard that does not have a number pad. So if you don't use a number pad, so you can kind of see this mm -hmm. number pad. So what it is, and I think this was like $25 um, because I'm short, I'm not a very large person. So if you find that when you're keyboarding, your arm is out too much to reach for the mouse, that means that you need a, a smaller keyboard and you can get one um, on Amazon, I think this was probably $25, $30. So that would be another um, thing to recommend. And then the third thing would be maybe a mouse. So there are a lot of, mices can be a lot of different prices, but what I'm talking about is a mouse that has a contour in it. Mm. So you have a contour, you can see this mouse, um, there's a little contour in it. So when I hold it, you can see that my hand is a lot more neutral than if I were to hold a small mouse like this, right? So sometimes these can be very affordable and there's lots of ones out there, but those would be my three, three things. 
Brilliant. I like it. And, and let's, let's go back. We're, we're, we're looking for more tips for the, uh, for the audience now. What is the one thing that each of you have done in your behavior to keep you sane? <laughs> you have, is there any keys to sanity during this very insane time? Uh, let's start with Sophia. I was going to say Netflix. <laughs> uh, but no, honestly, I think like walking outside once in a while. I Right now, I actually block um, some time on my calendar to say I'm going to take an evening walk after a full day of walking um, and just stroll around my block. And I actually recently got a puppy, so more reason to, to walk outside. So yeah, I think that really helps clear the air after a long day of walking, uh, working, and um, just get to know your neighbor sometimes as well. Yeah. What, what about you? What about you, Allison? What, what's kept you sane? A hundred percent, hands down, exercise. I like to run, and being very disciplined about getting outside and going for a run every day has been an absolute um, lifesaver. And it breaks up the day, as Sophia said. It's if you have a pet, if you have a dog that likes to run, fantastic, but not necessary. But I, I do think you need to be intentional. It might seem extreme to schedule the time, but I encourage everybody to to do that. And Elisa, what would be your tip? Yeah, so I used to be a runner, but my body doesn't allow me to run anymore. <laughs> So um, I would say, I think the walking, I do have a dog. She's, um, I've had her for many years. So every day we get outside, we do three or four miles every day. Um, and I would also say on the weekends, hiking mm -hmm. in nature. We, you know, Allison sort of mentioned how nature is so important to our souls. I would say getting out on some trails, wear your mask, but get out on those trails and just enjoy not working for the weekend if you're not hopefully some of you are not working on the weekends <laughs> right on right and, and this this goes along uh the lines with, with in general the advice you've been giving about get our blood moving get us circulating that that that's movement is life you know at, at, at some level you know if, if i were to add in mind and this this would be very uh close to sophia's is um now that we have no longer commutes and we can walk directly potentially from our beds uh, to our to our desks, I, I believe it is important to actually carve out some time throughout the day, whether it's a, a blocked lunch period or a you know a, a, a blocked a blocked time to go walking, but actually during your business hours, not necessarily after that works, because uh, business has certainly sucked us in on a, on a different level than it had had ever been uh, had had ever had before. Um, this is this is back to Sophia. Sophia, I think this is a this is a softball for you. What's your best tip for someone right now losing offers in this ridiculously hot market? Yeah, um, obviously it definitely takes a lot of patience for any buyers in, in today's market. It's a very competitive place. Um, and it definitely, I would say for a regular buyer, if you're doing traditional financing, it could take you know many, many tries before you get in a home. Um, Flat Homes is definitely having some of the most innovative uh, product to help you become more competitive in those kind of situations. Our cash offer is positioned in that way. Uh, we have our mortgage team that's able to get your underwriting very quickly as well. Um, but I would say certainly be patient in the process, um, but also be prepared um, to face competition as well. Um, you know, talk to your real estate agent or client advisor in our case, um, really understand getting to know uh, for the area and neighborhood that you're looking at what has it been in the last month or two it's not even the last you know three to six months uh, market has changed too quickly um, we need to really catch up on what we're thinking when it comes to uh, what it takes to win a home uh, in the current market condition so uh, lots of data lots of uh, experience and anecdotes from past clients as well um, you know here listen to that uh, in your heart uh, but also use some of the I would say more innovative uh, approach uh, to submit your offering in the strongest way possible. Uh, appreciate that. Allison, uh, a similar style question to you. How do we avoid the bugs, the gnats, and the spiders from coming indoors? So uh, I with, 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 with our indoor plants, how do we, how do we deal with, 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 with pests and bugs on, on, on indoor plants? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, first off, I am not a horticulturalist. I am not a botanist. Um, However, we do see this question a lot and I have learned through just osmosis. There are lots of chemical free products on the market. And so I would encourage you to, to do some Googling. You probably wanna find a product that's specific to the plant that you're treating. 
or just, you know, take a photo. There are some amazing apps. Um, this is separate from Yard Zen, of course, but um, some amazing apps that will help you identify, you know, if it, if it is in fact aphids or if it's something different, kind of diagnose the problem and then back into a solution. And then of course, yes, we all want to avoid chemicals in our home. So try to find something that's, that's organic and chemical free. Brilliant. Steering us in the right direction. I appreciate it. Um, Elisa, here's a question. Gaming chair or ergonomic chair? Can, is, is, a, is a gaming chair a viable alternative for um, a market? I'm not that, yeah, I'm not that familiar with gaming chairs, but I know that they're more expensive, um, particularly because they have different features on them. So there's more detail. Um, if I would say in any chair that you buy, one, there should be lumbar support that, that shapes to your lumbar spine. So that would mean having the backrest either go up or down or be mesh so it kind of fits. Um, I would have also a seat pan that gives the ability to move. Mm -hmm. And I would make sure that it, the, the chair can go up and down as well. That's important. Armrests, they don't have armrests, not a big deal. I know gaming chairs probably all have armrests because what they do is they rest their arm on the armrest and then use the control. So I would just say you need to find a chair, whether it turns into a gaming chair or not, it should have those features and, um, and then set to fit you. Right on, appreciate that. Um, Allison, uh, one of the audience members wants to know, what's the most creative outdoor situation you've seen for working at home? What are some of those exciting projects you've seen? So this, it's a great question. I'm so glad somebody asked it. We, we get very excited whenever somebody comes to us and they say, help me figure out a way to get a workspace in my, in my outdoor space. So, um, you know, I would say any, any situation that we've designed that factors lighting, you don't want direct lighting if you're working from a computer screen. So you need a little bit of shade. You need to be close to power. So think about either running an extension cord or being near the home. Um, think about proximity to the things that you're going to need. Maybe if you want to get up and, and get a glass of water, um, that's something to be mindful of. But um, but I would say the most creative. I would say they're all they're all creative. I think the idea of getting outside and working outside is creative in and of itself. So I commend anybody that's kind of thinking along those lines. Brilliant, brilliant. Um, Sophia, have you have you seen a, um, any new? issues with with um, couples who are looking to purchase their home um, as far as uh, an increase potentially in, in interpersonal conflict during uh, during this home buying process in a COVID environment? Uh, I would say it's probably not particular to the COVID environment. Um, of course, home buying is a very huge purchase. It's a, probably one of the biggest purchases that you're going to make in your lifetime. A uh, huge financial decision as well. So we see um, you know, a lot of couples, this is the probably the first most important uh, conversation that they have about their finances, about their credit score, how do they plan to structure their home purchase um, so that they get the best uh, interest rate and, and things like that. So it's certainly an opportunity for further discussion and hopefully figuring things out together as a couple. Um, but I have also seen, I would say, clients certainly having different tastes and different styles when it comes to what type of home that they like. It's always interesting to be on those tours when you're <laughs> seeing the clients having life discussions about you know what they love what they don't like and then sometimes the two just don't see eye to eye um so i think you know it it's impossible to find a perfect home that checks every single box for everyone so it's important for you to know before you start a home shopping uh, journey to know what are the must-haves for both of you and um what are something that's nice to have that you can compromise on so uh, but yeah it's a it's a pretty meaningful journey for any couples or um, to take on. And, and staying with you for a moment, Sophia, um, you know, many of us might feel cramped, uh, like, 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 you know, like, like you did and, and want to make the move to a, to, a, to a bigger footprint. But then we also realize that there's a potential that the current situation is temporary and may change. How do we, how, how, what kind of insight would you give to someone um, who's, who's trying to balance the, those two things? 
Yeah, I would say um, real estate investment is a long-term investment. If you're looking for short-term returns, real estate uh, is not something for you um, just because of the cost, the energy associated with making a purchase like this. Um, but historically, if you look at the long-term data of how real estate has been able to appreciate over time in different types of market circumstances, we rebounded from 2008 and have been catching up and growing even higher um, You know, today, uh, even in a really strange you know pandemic situation um, it is an investment that's worthwhile uh, making and hopefully it's not only a financial decision that you're making uh, it's also a personal lifestyle choice that you're making as well um, so with all that in mind um, you should be hoping to, to choose something that fits your lifestyle right now um, and also in the future but knowing that it is a really good investment for you from an appreciation potentially cash flow perspective you're if you're looking to um, use it as investment properties going forward um, but it's certainly something that's worthwhile thinking about uh, when you're thinking about how to allocate your assets going forward Brian, Brian. well let me let me ra- let me wrap up as we're, ju- we're just over the top of the hour and, and don't forget if you fill out the survey you, you're entered into a 150 dollars amazon gift card wrap raffle there is one prize for all of the uh all of the um uh attendees uh, of, of today's panel let's look forward uh whether it's a forecast an outlook a hope or a dream aspiration what are each of you looking forward uh to in the in, in the next year Let, let's start with allison on this one yeah, I so I'm I'm personally hopeful that a lot of the the silver lining and goodness that's come along with this past year that we have all endured is going to going to stick with us. I um, I'm more connected to my family than I ever have been. I'm spending more time with my kids. I I have time to exercise more time than I did when I was commuting into an office. I feel like our employees in our, are in a lot of ways happier with their work life balance. And so I'm hopeful that, you know, as a, as a people, we can find, find a compromise, find a balance where we carry the good with us into the future. Right. Elisa? That's great. I really like what you said. Um, I agree with that. I think that we've all have a different empathetic side to us mm-hmm. than maybe we did before the pandemic. Um, I think it's brought out qualities and values in us that we never knew everyone, you know, we, we never saw before um, outwardly. So I hope that that does continue. Um, one of the things I'm really looking forward to, I used to travel a lot, and that is um, I'm, not, I'm not comfortable getting on an airplane yet. So for me, I really look forward to more discovery um, when obviously the world is safer to be in. Brilliant. Sophia? Yeah. Um, I would say it's really, this pandemic has taught us to be really open-minded about how we used to do things and what are different ways that we can continue conducting our business. Um, You know, one true example is, you know, we thought we have to meet our clients in person to build that relationship. But, you know, virtual meetings are taking over the world right now. We're finding new ways to really build that relationship with everyone, not just our clients, our coworkers, but also with our family and friends as well. So I think it's opening up a lot of possibility for um, new new ways of doing what we used to do and uh, creating that uh, new environment and trial and error, experimenting new new ideas with with the, the team. So, yeah, definitely looking forward to more of that. That is absolutely brilliant. Well, well, um, yeah, I'd like to thank the, the the attendees. Hopefully, you got out of this as as much as I did. I, I certainly picked up some um, really really good insights, uh, you know, throughout for all the panelists. And I really want to um, uh, say thank you very much to all the panelists for taking for taking part here. Uh, it, it, it was it was it was spectacular. I, I again, I, I learned quite a bit. So at least from from my perspective, I'm now sitting. My back doesn't hurt, and I'm going to look for more women <laughs> moving inside. Um, so thank thank you all very much. Fill out that survey and look forward to seeing you all you all next time. And don't forget to check out um, our, our, our uh, the human scale and uh, and and yard zen as well on on your on your way out this evening. So cheers uh, to a great 2021. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Sophia. And thank you. Yes. Uh, thank you, guys.